All right, everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video with Fat Phil, and we're going to be talking today about why I think Bo-Katan Mandalore and Dark Trooper Gideon are going to be two of the most important characters in the coming months to Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. And I know what you all are thinking, Phil, what the hell are you talking about? Like, we need Jar Jar and Queen Amidala. I'm going to show you guys why I think this. We're going to get into the video, so please like, subscribe, comment down below. We're going to get right in here, guys. Let's get this introduction out of the way. All right, so let's get the background music going now. I'll have to figure out that transition a little bit better here. But let's get in here, guys. Let's talk about it. So I want to actually go back real quick to the road ahead from February. And they taught this is where they first talk about this bonus zone. And they said they don't have the full details of this bonus zone. We're working with uh, we are working on one and leaning and learning our inspiration from um, Star Wars Rebels. So that's very important. So and so you'll find yourself on a scarred planet riddled with conflict heavily influenced by Galact the Galactic Empire. So gear up your squad, prepare for battle to help your guild to victory. And they said, as we're still working on developing it, the requirements have not been finalized yet. However, you can expect that some of our newer Mandalorian faction characters, and then they s explicitly say Bo-Katan Mandalore and Dark Trooper Moff Gideon and some old favorites like Sabine Wren, will likely make an appearance. We'll be sure to post uh, the updated list once we have them locked in. So I wanna head back to the game. I want you to think about what they just said there. They just told us that those three characters are gonna be needed for this upcoming bonus zone. And the reason I think that's so important to understand with these bonus zones is you have to remember that these bonus zones are how they have kind of increased the rewards that guilds can earn. So I'm going to tell you now that I would not be ignoring these characters, even though we've got Padme Amidala on the horizon, even though, you know, Jar Jar is coming too. These characters are going to play a significant role in a guilds of, in your guild's ability to earn additional rewards. And I think for the guilds that are focusing on them now, getting these characters, trying to move ahead, I think this is going to be a very important place to look. Think, because I, I was always thinking like, why did they change the Bo-Katan cadence to monthly and work? And obviously it has to do with pushing revenue. But it also got me thinking about that road ahead that they're going to want to make sure that they're going to they want to reward the people who are working on those characters who have invested in those characters in more ways than just oh they got some datacrons and like before you're like well phil like we don't really know what that zone is going to be like they've given us the blueprints for this like they showed us hey here's jedi knight cal Kestis and this bonus zone that gets from you know from braca all the way to zepho so we have those blueprints. We kind of have an idea of what kind of, you know, relics were required, um, the difficulty of the mission, and kind of the character makeup of it. So what I want to do is flip over, before I go a little bit more into the video here, I want to flip over just to show you guys that bonus zone. So let's start off over here. And again, I think it's very important to understand how these bonus zones play a big role in your guild's ability to earn additional rewards. So... Down here is the bonus mission for on Braca, right? Braca is a Relic 6 requirement planet, right? You need the characters at Relic 6. But the special mission here requires Relic 7 characters. So right away, the special mission requires one Relic level higher than the actual planet it's on. And that's a blueprint that I would bet money on. And then you have the bonus zone of Zepho, which can unlock you rewards of up to 40 total additional Kyrotech, 450 Guild Event Currency 3, and then an additional star. But the other thing that's also there on Zepho is a whole nother special mission for another faction, clone troopers, but still another special mission to earn additional guild event currency too. So right away, you understand that, okay, wherever, whatever planet they put the special mission on to unlock the bonus zone, there's going to be additional rewards there. And then you figure that on that bonus zone, there's also going to be additional reward layers to reward those guilds who can do that. And the reason why these bonus zones are so important is because of the way that the uh, reward, the reward, the reward structure in Rise of the Empire is very different than what it was in Geonosis territory battles. Let me show you guys what I mean. So, when you start off just at the very bottom, right? You start off with 250 crystals, 1,000 get three, 2,000 get two, and 3,000 get one. 
So at every star that you get, you go up 25 crystals, 150 get three, 175 get two, and 175 get one. So you're slowly, you know, as you increase your star count, you're slowly earning more and more rewards. But once you get to 13 stars, you cap out on your get one. So once you reach 13 stars, you've capped out, you don't earn any more guild event currency one. And then as you continue to go up, once you get to 24 stars, you cap out at guild event currency two. That right there is why these bonus zones are so important that for most guilds to go from 34 to or 33 to 34 stars, you're not really going to notice that much of a difference in your rewards. You get 150 guild event currency three and 25 crystals. It's really not anything crazy. So the way that they're trying to push guilds to grow is instead to use these bonus zones to increase rewards. And I think this is a really important step that Capital Games has taken. What they recognized is that in the older systems of this game, the quote unquote, I call it your natural growth, that as you built more Galactic Legend, as you built more teams, your rewards would kind of significantly increase. But now in Rise of the Empire, it's a lot different. If you want your rewards to significantly increase, you've got to build specific things have the specific mods and the strategy to get those done. And so I think that this next bonus zone for bo Gideon, and all these characters is going to be very important. Now, let me first think, like, show you guys where I think this could be. So they mentioned Star Wars Rebels, which makes me think that this could be on Lothal. This would be worst case scenario for me, uh, and I think for a lot of us, because Lothal is a Relic 8 requirement. So... If you think of this special mission here, where it's a Relic 6 planet, but to do the mission is a Relic 7 wreck, if it's on Lethal and it follows that same pattern, that same blueprint, the special mission would require Relic 9 characters. Like, just let that sink in, that you would need Relic 9 characters to do the mission, and then the bonus zone would then also require those Relic 9 characters, and that would probably be, you know, in one of these regions, right? Over here or over here. The one thing, and the reason I say that I think Lothal could be that answer is because of Star Wars Rebels, that Lothal was kind of, was the primary planet that we were on, right? That that's one that kind of canonically makes sense when you mention Star Wars Rebels, Lothal is kind of that answer. The only other options I think that we have, because they, the one thing that I think makes me think it wouldn't be, that it would be Lothal as well, I should say why I think Lothal could be a good answer, is that they could put the the planet here right it would be whether it's mandalore or whatever they could throw it here which kind of aligns it with these planets and the relic nine requirements that are for the ring of kafreen and vandor right you guys see that oops that the relic nine requirement over here so that kind of makes me wonder if that's where the bonus zone would go is like a relic nine which would be kind of scary the only other place that i think makes sense is somewhere off of like felucia here where it would go here, or maybe off a of Tatooine here. The reason I say those two is because they mention light side and dark side characters interacting. So I don't think it's going to go over here in like the light side zone of planets. I think it's going to kind of fall in somewhere in this range where it can go off of a planet that allows mixed stuff. Because for all we know, it could be, you know, because they want both light side and dark side characters in that bonus zone. I feel like it makes sense that it's got to be somewhere in this region, right? So somewhere in like this region here. Um, so I wanted to at least get that out there. I don't know what the bonus zone requirements are, but you could imagine Relic 7 minimum, but I would probably say Relic 8 would be my guess. I feel like Relic 8 is the safest guess. I feel like Relic 9 would just be crazy. I could be wrong, but I think Relic 8 would be a pretty safe guess. Um, but... Like, again, you know, you've got that bonus zone. But here's the thing. With Bo-Katan, I know a lot of you were saying, well, Phil, you know, you've got Jar Jar going on and Queen Amidala and you've got Padawan Space Jesus and Master Qui-Gon coming to the game. Yes, we do. But none of these guys are even farmable yet. And, like, Bo-Katan's requirements are honestly, like, really solid. So you've got this amazing Jedi in Keller and Beck, right? Absolutely amazing. And he slots into that Qui-Gon Jinn team that everybody has. So right there, okay, that's solid. But then you're also going to build Beskar Mermando, who most people have already. 
Paz Vizsla, and IG12 and Grogu who fill in that Bo-Katan team. So then that fifth slot is kind of opened up for either the armor, OG, Bo-Katan, or even like Sabine Ren, right? And I feel like it's got to be one of these two makes more sense. A very Kyra Tech intensive team, but at least it's not one of these situations where okay, these are the requirements for Bo-Katan, and then her team is something that you've got to go build entirely from scratch. Kind of like Lord Vader. You build Lord Vader as a galactic legend, then you need to go build his entire team if you haven't already. Where Bo-Katan, you've done the majority of the work for her team as it stands when you unlock her, which is really, really nice. So, like, it looks bad, but it's not as bad as you think because the gear you're putting on these guys, you know, is going in that team. But then Dark Trooper Moff Gideon is the other one. And a lot of you are going to say, oh, Phil, well, you know, you need to build his entire team. You do. But in my opinion, it's a, pre it's a pretty soft gear. All things, like, all things considered, this team up here takes more gear than the Dark Trooper Moff Gideon team. But the other side of that is Scout Trooper is a Galactic Legend requirement. So gearing Scout Trooper, you're just paying it forward. That, hey, maybe you've already got Leia, so, like, you have Scout Trooper geared up. Or... You go Relic Scout Trooper, maybe not to Relic 7 right away, but you've put all the gear on him that at some point when you're ready to go for Leia, you've got a wreck done. OG Moff Gideon, yeah. There's one that you gotta kind of bite the bullet on, and that's kind of the way I feel about the armor. Him and Gideon, you kind of swap out, and you're like, or her and Gideon kind of swap out, and you're like, yeah, they both kind of suck the gear, but very good characters and make the team a lot better. But then, like, Death Trooper and Shore Trooper don't need a lot of Kyrotech. They might need some core gear, right? They could be heavy on the core gear. But the Kyrotex is what ki is killer, and they're pretty easy to gear up. So, like, I say it's a soft gear because one of them's a Galactic Legend requirement, and then two of them are very low Kyrotex. So you're left with this guy, Moff Gideon, that, yeah, it's still a good character. And even before you get Dark Trooper Moff Gideon, all of these characters are very good with either General Veers or Aiden. Um, because you got, I mean, three of them really good with Aiden, and then Moff Gideon, obviously, very good with General Veers. But... Guys, that's why I would be, you know, I would, I advise you, do not ignore Bo, do not ignore Dark Trooper Moff Gideon. I know we've got these things on the horizon, I know they're coming down the pipeline, but I'm telling you that that bonus zone, they did not mention that to only release it in December. Like, I have a feeling that it's going to be sooner than we think, and it's going to significantly increase the quality of the rewards in Rise of the Empire, because that's what they've done. They've given us that blueprint, that characters like that, hey... Jedi Knight Cal, not needed for the raid. Um, you know, like not needed for any of the raids, but here's this bonus zone where you get insane rewards from. So I feel like they're going to try to do that same thing with Bo-Katan, same thing with Dark Trooper Gideon. Hey, they might not be needed for the coming raid, but you're going to want them because these rewards are going to be solid. And honestly, I would not be shocked if we got that bonus zone around the same time that we got the new raid. Because that's the way Capital Games loves to do things. So that's the end of the video, guys. Let me know your thoughts down below. Do you think I'm on? Do you think I'm way off of this? And you're like, Phil, you're a moron. I'd love to hear it. I love you all. May the force be with you. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Cheers.